shall make his house and look. The proud, they shall run it up. The humble shall hear the old and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me today, leave the church. And let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. I said, The Lord is good. And greatly to be praised. Oh, taste and see. Has anyone tasted and seen this week? Of how good the Lord is. Blessed are those who put their trust in the Lord. So praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the beautiful sanctuary. Praise him in the feminine of his power. Praise him, somebody, for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent goodness. Let everything, let everything that inhales and exhales, praise ye the Lord. For he is good and worthy to be praised. I want to thank the pastor and the elders of this church for giving me the opportunity to stand in front of his people. I want to thank the youth leadership team as well, Uncle Ennis and uh, the people who work with him. I want to thank you all for this day. I want to thank the various singing groups, the church choir, the song was very powerful. Thank you. I also want to the youth choir, the divine daughters. Sometimes when you prepare, it sounds well, but when you come and you stand in front of everyone, it's, it's a different challenge. Either way, I want to thank you for your blessing. Today's sermon is going to be entitled, Meeting the Bridegroom. Let's pray. Dear Lord, this is your moment. We are your people. Lord, I pray that you will speak through me. Decrease me so you may increase. Lord, I pray that you would comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Speak for us through any way possible. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. What we receive when we first meet Jesus Christ isn't enough to carry us through to meet him, the bridegroom. Jesus knew that, hence the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now it's very important for us to understand the context in which Jesus tells this parable we're about to study. In Matthew 24, verse 3, Jesus warns his disciples of the last day events. And the Savior tells us that while we should be able to recognize the season of his coming, the day and the hour is unknown. So he tells the parable of the ten virgins to encourage the disciples and the latter day church. In many parts of the East, wedding festivals are held in the evening. 
The bridegroom goes forth to meet his bride and bring her to his home. Similar to Jesus coming down to earth for us and bringing us to heaven. It's very interesting to know that the Bible begins and ends with a marriage. Please don't think I'm speaking about marriage today. Genesis 2 verse 24 talks about Adam and Eve being married together. Revelation 21 verse 2 talks about Christ and the saints of God being married together. Now, for this parable, there are four keys that we need to understand. How many did I say? Four keys. Number one is the ten virgins symbolizing Christians. Number two is the bridegroom standing there for Jesus Christ himself. Number three is the Lamb, which is the Word of God. Psalm 119, verse 105 tells us, Your Word is a light unto my feet. And then the final, and probably the most important, is the oil, which is the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at the ten virgins. The Bible tells us that five are wise and five are foolish. Now keep in mind that they all had the lamb. Meaning they all had the word of God. You see, all of them were on the same journey to meet the bridegroom. All of them were in the same location in the church. All of them seem on the surface to be similar. But Jesus tells us that five are wise and five are foolish. We, we read this in verse 3 where it says, Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now, the word virgin symbolized their moral uprightness in character. <laughs> the word virgin. <laughs> they were all perfect. You see, even though they were all perfect, it says the ten virgins. What Jesus is saying is that not everyone in the church will be going to heaven. I want you to listen to me carefully because reading this was very disturbing. Not everyone singing in the choir, so let me say, will be singing the land song at the gates of heaven. Not everyone preaching about God is necessarily going to meet God. So like not everyone professing is necessarily possessing. 
and yet, yeah, and you want to be one back and in the answer so now, and bet. You see, in this parable, the only difference made all the difference. The Bible tells us the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil. In Christ's object lesson by Ellen G. White, she says, they all had lamps and vessels for oil. For a time, there was seen no difference between them. So with the church that lives just before the second coming of Christ. We all have a knowledge of the scriptures. We all have heard the message again and again that Christ is coming. And confidently we expect his appearing. But is, as in the parable, so it is now. You, you see, in the parable, a time of waiting intervenes. Faith is tried, and when the cry is heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him, many are unready. They have no oil in their vessels with their lamps. You see, because just because you hold this Bible does not necessarily know the meaning that you know what's in it. Just because we have the Adventist message and we have the health message does not necessarily mean that we have the Word of God in us. You see, there comes a time where we sometimes pray and we pray, but God doesn't answer us. As a Christian, nothing will make you more frustrated, tired, than praying for deliverance, knowing you've done nothing wrong, but yet still there seems to be no answer. You see, in such situations, you can't help but get tired. That's why we need to have some oil. Because your lamp of faith, which you receive when you first meet Christ, isn't enough to carry you through to meet him. In verse 5, we read that all the ten virgins slumbered and slept. Now, I want you to understand that the Bible says that all the ten virgins both the wise and the unwise slept and slumbered. That tells me that burnout happens to all of us. No matter what position you hold in the church, from time to time, we all come to a low point. I wish we would all testify to this. There is nothing wrong with this, by the way. You see, our response to the high calling in God amidst the challenges of life is what seems to be the issue. I'm 
Such situation leads to us asking, why is Christ taking so long? Similar to the disciples, Jesus said many years ago that he goes to prepare a place for us. But the disciples have died and passed away, and yet we are still waiting for his appearance. Why is Jesus taking so long? May I suggest maybe if Jesus came right now, you wouldn't be ready. You see, the real truth is that Jesus has long finished the place. He's only waiting on me and you. Because if we came now, some of us will be lost. Hence the delay. During such a delay, we need the Holy Spirit to prepare us to meet the bridegroom. You see, in the Bible, there are so many characters that failed in regards to patience. When we read Exodus 32, verse 1, it says, Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods, that we shall go before us, for us with the Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt. We do not know what has become of him. Now I say, You see, even though they've seen the great power of God in their lives, they've just seen God open an ocean for them to walk through. But during a small delay, they began worshiping false gods. The bridegroom that we talk about gave his life at Calvary. You see, he didn't just give his life. He gave also the Holy Spirit. That spirit is what we can seek after during times of delays. But you see, Jesus Christ suffered the longest delay from the Father. Just so that me and you can receive the Holy Spirit. Coming back to the parable, there is a crude ending that we all need to take notice of. It says the bridegroom, who we all understand to be Jesus Christ, says to the foolish, I know you not. Why would Jesus say such a mean word? Remember in the East, weddings are held in the night. It's very dark at night. This is even why we need the light. For you see, only those with lights can find their way through the darkness. For if you have no light, how are you able to see where you're going? 
shining out in the darkness, it helped to illuminate the way to the home of the bridegroom. This was with the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, when we get to the bridegroom's wedding feast, the light that shines upon our face will help Christ recognize me and you. For if we have no light shining, if it says, yeah, through no fault of the bridegroom, he simply can't recognize us. And yet, in a, in a story that happened in 1845, um, it says Captain Sir John Franklin prepared as if they were embarking on a pleasure cruise. You see, there was they were traveling across the Pacific Ocean near the Canadian Arctic. And rather than preparing as if they are going near the ice pole, they prepared as if they were going on a cruise. He packed a 1200 volume library, a hand over China plate settings for officers and men. He cut glass wine goblets and sterling silver flatware. Beautiful, yes, and wonderfully designed, yes. Years later, some of those plate settings will be found near a clump of frozen bodies. For you see, the voyage was doomed when the ship sailed into a frigid waters and became trapped in ice. If you say, the crew did not prepare for this. For eventually the ships became icy. If he said, On a voyage which was supposed to last two to three years, they packed only their navy issue uniforms. And the captain carried just a 12 day supply of coal. If you see the frozen body of an officer was eventually found, mouths from the vessel. Wearing, wearing his uniform of fine blue cloth. Edged with silk braid and a blue grey coat and a silk handkerchief. Clothing which was noble and respectable. But it was wholly inadequate. You see, if Jesus came for you now, would you be ready? Would you be able to enter with him into the wedding banquet? Or will you miss your own wedding? For you see, notice that the parable in nowhere mentions the bride. 
For the bride are me and you. So are we going to miss our own wedding? For you see, Jesus is coming again. We are closer to his arrival today than we were yesterday. The time to get ready is very limited. If you have not done so already, the time to seek some extra oil is now. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful message, George. Very powerful. Um, let's have the closing in, which is SDAM 422. 422. Patrimonial, sorry.